Alright, hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend Insect. So, in the previous video, we have talked about how can we create a blockchain contract with the JavaScript. For this video, I'm going to teach you how can you create a contract with the TypeScript support. Because nowadays, nobody uses JavaScript anymore. Because by using it, you may get a lot of bugs over the top. Okay, let's get started. At the first, I do not want to create the template by myself, so I decided to do some research on the internet, and I found one that just fit my needs. It's called TypeScript Sonality Div Starter Kit. Then I did a clone to put it into my own rebound story. At the beginning, all we have to do is to clone this rebound story. And trust me, we will be working based on this rebound story. Let's use the VS Code to open that folder. You say this is the structure. First, we get the contract file. It's a very simple one, the counter. You can add a lambda to it, or you can subscribe a lambda for it. Then you get the deploy scraps. For now, everything is type scraps, so that's why it ends with the TS. And for this one, for this tutorial, it's using a total different local chain deployment tool. It's using the hard hat. This is a different one compared to the GANIC. But anyway, let's get started. But the first, we need to install all those dependencies we need. And then we get an error. Why? Because I am living in China. For the China, they got a great firewall which blocks almost anything outside of the China. So what I have to do is to use a VPN and do the installation again. Okay, after that, according to his tutorial, we should be able to compile the contract. So let me do that. Young compile. All right. After compiling, we shall be able to get two folders. The first one is uh, artifacts. It contains all those Johnson files that we need for the web page to interact with the contract. And also, it will generate the TypeScript definition here so that we can use it to let our project have the TypeScript support when we call that contract. Great. Then we need to start a node. Why? Because we want to deploy this contract to a local chain. So we need to at least start the local chain first. We can do it by using this command. It will run a local chain in this port and then it will generate a few wallets or accounts that you could use in your MetaMask. So what you need to do here is to go to your MetaMask, add a network. For our case, in the previous video, we have already defined one, defined a network. What we need to do is to make some changes. For example, the gRPC URL now becomes 8545. And then the chain ID, now it becomes 31337. Once you set up, you save it and change your MetaMask network to the local network you have. And after that, we shall import an account by using the private key. So we go to the MetaMask and import accounts past the private key, hit the import button. Now we got uh, 10,000 ETH, which is super cool. So back to our topic, how can we deploy that contract to our local chain? We use this command. But wait a minute, does that really true? Here you can see for his command, he's using a different network LAN. It's not using the local host, but inside of the port had configured that TS. If you look at it, you'd say there has a section called network. Under it, it has a local host. For here, I'm going to define the URL of that local host. Then we will change the deploy command 
to local host. And then this is the command that we are going to run. Okay, it's done. For this case, the address of that contract we just deployed is this one. Remember it because we are going to use it later. Now we have almost set up everything except the front end code. I mean the web page part. How can we do that? Well, we can have a lot of choice. For example, you can use the React or you can use a view. But here I'm going to use a framework called Wait. This one. I'm going to create a new project with it. And for the project name, it should be blockchain shop. It's a view project and has the TypeScript support. Now it's done. Let me go to the new folder, blockchain shop. From there, we install all those dependencies. After that, let me serve it. We should be able to get into the web page like this. If we go to the app.view, we can actually delete all those things that we do not need. All right, now it, it got nothing. But I'm going to add something so that we could have a clear feeling of whether the web page is working or not. From my experience, whenever you made a mistake that causes the view crush, then it will not show anything on the web page. So as long as there still has a tag like this one, we could know that we didn't make any huge mistakes on our front end code. All right, back to our project. For this project, it not only uses this local chain, it also used this package as an interaction tool for the front end page. So that's why we're going to get into that repository or the document of it. And you will see something like this. What we need to do is to ins install it. How can we do that? We say young aid with that package. Then. And after that, we shall be able to do the coding. At the first, we need to import this package and then get the Web3 provider by using those code he provided to us. Here, let me create a function. Get a provider. All right, then in the unmounted script, I'm going to print out the provider. Let's say now we get the provider. Great. But that doesn't do anything yet. We need to import the contracts that we have compiled before. How can we do that? From the contracts section, we got some code out there. I'm going to do a copy for all those code. And for this case, it's going to be a new function. I'm going to call it get contracts. For this method, for, for us to get a contract, the first argument is the address of that contract. As I said before, this is the address of that contract. So I'm going to do a copy and paste it right in here. Then we have to pass the ABI. The ABI here means the application binary interface. How can we get it? From here, we can know that it can be as simple as import that Johnson file. Then with a dot ABI, it would solve that problem. So let me do that. Here, I'm going to import the contract from an address. For this case, it should be inside of the artifacts. Here we go. After the importing, we shall be able to use it like this. Dot ABI. You say no errors for now. All right, now let me get the contracts and print it out. So far, we got the contracts, but we do not have the access to those contract function yet. We need to also import the type for it. How can we do that? Let's say import counter from this folder. Okay, it contains all those tabs that we need. And what we could do is to do it like this. We set it as a counter. And then we could be able to have an access to those methods inside of the contract. For example, the get counts, the count up, and the count down. 
So for now, let me just create two buttons. We're going to have two functions, A to 1 and the minus 1. For each function, it will receive that contract and call that function. Uh, the contract should be a counter in this case. And also, we're going to have a function to get the results. Great. We shall make it much simpler than this. I mean, we should have a function called get contract, and we give it nothing. And then, for each time, no matter what kind of function we call, we always generate a new contract. Okay, for now, if we click the get account button again, you say that we can indeed get a number out of from it. And then, whenever we do a click on the count up, we call the 81 function, this function, and whenever we click the countdown function, it will call another function. Now, if I had the count up, we get an arrow. It says, sending a transaction requires a signer. So, how can we do that? From this line of code, we know that we could get the signer by doing so. After we get the signer, how can we assign it to the contract? How can we do that? Well, we could use the connect function. By giving the connect function a signer, it will return you a new contract. You will definitely ask me why I know that, because when I get into the document, I say for this function, it will, will receive a signer and um, it will return a new instance of the contract, but connected to a provider, in, in other words, which is connected to the MetaMask, somehow like that. Now, let me go back, do a refresh and hit the count up button. You say we got the MetaMask set up. Now, if I hit the confer, we got an error. How oh, this is happening? To be honest, I don't know. Hmm, I'm going to do a search. So Google. In MetaMask, ensure you are on your D or test account. Then, click the Arrenter Circle. Choose Setting, choose Advanced, and head the Reset Accounts. Let me try it out. For this account, we go to Settings, Advanced, Reset Accounts. So we head that. Okay. After that, we do a refresh. We head the account up. We head the Confirm. You say, we got it right. And after a few seconds, if you click the get account button again, you will say now we got a bigger number. Before it's 0, 0. Now it's 0, 1. The number was added by 1. And if we hit the countdown button, and we hit the confirm, after a few seconds, we hit the get accounts. You say, for now, we got the 0, 0 again, which is cool. The only problem is here, all those operations will require some time to be able to get executed successfully. But how do we know if they are done or not? Well, in the contract, it got an event, something like this. Event counted to, it will return you some data. So how can we use the event to know if the operation has successfully operated? Well, we can do this. For example, first we get the contract, then contract dot on on what on event, but what kind of event? Counted to event. So here I'm gonna set this string to counted to, and for this event, it will will return us a, a number, which is a counting. So I'm gonna print out the counting in this case now. If we had the count up, if we confirm it, when the operation is done, it will automatically print out the number you want. For example, now if I add one, when it's done, it will just print out that data we want immediately. So this is how we take the event. And basically, for now, you know how to do the development with the TypeScript support. And based on this video, or, based on this tutorial, you could just get started.
to do the real development with the cryptocurrency contract. And I hope you get something from this video. I hope you find it interesting and useful. I will see you guys in the next video. And in the next video, I will get started to write those solidity code in a serious way. I mean, we are going to use those complex syntax to construct some complex application that was generally required in the real world developments. Okay, that's it. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.